Hey, 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 how's it going? Do it yourself first. Today we're going to go over how you can make sense of automotive electrical wiring diagrams. Now I know what you're thinking. Wow, electrical wiring diagrams. This is going to be so exciting. All right, kidding aside, I find that do it yourself first, find doing electrical work, you know, pretty difficult. And, you know, they look at this graph and intimidates the hell out of them. They think it's a rocket science. They give up, take their cars to the shop, spend hundreds of dollars on some very minor basic electrical work that their car needed. All the while, they just needed some basic understanding on how to read electrical diagrams and how the electrical system in their car works. All right, so today we're going to kind of start from the basics and then we'll move our way up in the future videos. And I know a lot of you are familiar with electrical problems and solving electrical issues because you've been a subscriber to my channel probably for years. But I do have a lot of new subscribers as in probably a few hundred thousand subscribers since the last video I did on you know, doing electrical diagnosis on your car. So this video is for them, but fear none. Pretty soon we're gonna move our way up and we're gonna you know, get into the more sophisticated and harder electrical work in the future videos. So yeah, don't forget to subscribe, hit that like button, and also the bell notification so you're notified of my new videos that will be coming out. All right, so first we'll start with a very basic circuit as an example. So obviously you need the power source, which is gonna be the battery on your car. Then you got your positive side and the negative side. On the positive side, right after the battery, you're usually gonna have a fuse. This is gonna limit the amount of current that can flow through the circuit, protecting the wires, on the components or the loads that are going to be on the circuit. Then after the fuse, you're going to have your load. This could be a solenoid, sensor, you know, your headlight bulbs, your, your windshield wipers, anything that uses current is going to be considered a load. And then after the load, you're going to have the ground or the negative side. All right, so I'll give you a visual on my GMC Yukon so you can understand it better. So here's our car battery, obviously. You got the positive side from here you're gonna have power supplied to your fuse or junction box. This is the under the hood fuse or junction box, as you can see here. From here, power is supplied to different loads on the car. And then every load on the car needs a pathway back to ground or the negative side of the battery. Now, if you look closely on almost every car, you're gonna see from the negative side of the battery, there's gonna be a cable that's attached to the chassis of the car. And right here, you can see this one. If you follow this, this is gonna be down there and it's screwed in to the chassis of the vehicle. This is so that you don't have to run a wire from every load on your car back to the negative side of the battery. You can simply screw it, screw the negative side of that load to the chassis of the car, and then it'll use the chassis of the car to find a pathway back to the ground or the negative side of the battery. Now, what we can think of when reading electrical diagrams and looking at different electrical circuits on your car is that you're just simply looking at a combination of these you know, simple circuits. And what you need to do is to simply separate these circuits so that you can look at them and diagnose problems with those circuits properly. Now, they're gonna be obviously slightly more complicated than what we just went over. And by that, I mean, you basically are gonna need some type of a switch because not all the loads on your car are always on at all times, whether it's, uh, you know, some loads like solenoids can be either ground side or power side controlled. You know, different sensors have power running to them when the key is in the on position, the ignition key that is, and you know, or me mechanical switches that might be on your car. All of those can make things a little bit more complicated, but once you figure that out, it's pretty basic stuff. All right, so let's say for example, you're looking at diagnosing pro electrical problems with your EVAP perch solenoid. So you go and get your wiring diagram, you find the EVAP perch solenoid on the diagram, so next, all you need to do is simply find the power and the negative side. Now, if you're starting out, one very simple way is to simply go up and down the diagram and find a fuse. Once you find the fuse, that's your power side. Or I guess I should say the positive side, not to cause any confusion. But anyway, what I recommend you do next is if you're new at reading diagrams is to go and grab a red marker. And then from the fuse, start drawing a line to the load, which is the EVAP perch solenoid in this circuit. So here's what it will look like. So you got your power side, you got your load, and then you get your negative or the ground side, which is goes to your power control module. And if you read here, it says evaporative emission solenoid control, which means that this solenoid is ground side controlled by your car's power control module. That means there's always power supplied to this load, the evap perch solenoid, and then when the computer decides to turn this on, it will supply ground to it, completing the circuit and turning on 
the EVAP Herd Solenoid. Now notice how we've kind of ignored the different numbers, the letters, the arrows, all that stuff on this circuit. Well, basically, you only need to pay attention to those if there's a problem, let's say, in this wire. But for just to give you some uh, idea, this number six here, that's the pin number for the connector C4. Basically, you would need to, if you were to check this, you would need to go find connector four for the junction box. Pin number six is gonna be this wire. This, this is the color of the wire. And down here, where it says S105, that's a splice or a junction. Now, if you were to find out where power goes from this fuse to this junction and splices off to different circuits, you would need to go find uh, the splice or S105. Same thing on the ground side, you got the pin number, pin number 20, connector three. There's the color of the wire. And of course you got one and two here. These are the number for the pins on the connector for the EVAP perch solenoid, which is basically gonna, basically gonna be a two pin connector. All right, so that's a very basic circuit and a very basic diagram. However, when you're looking at a wiring diagram like this, like this that I showed you earlier, you might be confused and think every time these wires on this diagram are crossing each other, that's a splice. However, that's not the case. So basically unless you have a dot or some sort of an indication that you have a splice, when you're looking at a diagram like this, all these wires basically means even though they're overlapping, they are not part of the same circuit and they are not in contact with one another and circuit and current cannot flow through one wire through the other wire even though they seem like overlapping on this graph. All right, so back to this graph. Let's say we're on this circuit for the crankshaft position sensor and we want to look up where power goes from here because as you can see, five volt supply comes from your power control module, goes up this wire and then it splits off at S119. And then from there, it also goes to your crankshaft position sensor. But where does it go from here? Well, you go to your repair manual, look up S119, and here's the graph. It goes here. So here's a, a quick version, or a quick or a shorter version of the graph on the previous page that I showed you. Here's our power control module. Here's the connector, pin number 17, which if you go back to the previous page, here it is, connector C1, pin number 17, five volt power supply, comes up here and splices off to four different sensors. So this is the power supply to the camshaft position sensor, crankshaft position sensor that we saw earlier, throttle position sensor, and the manifold absolute pressure sensor. Now a lot of times, depending on what type of electrical diagram you're looking at, when two wires on that diagram are overlapping, they'll kind of do this in order to indicate that those wires are not part of the same circuit but then other times they don't. So you simply need to be a little bit familiar on how to read this. All right, so basically in order to make sense of this uh, crazy looking diagram here, which looks like a maze, you basically find the positive side of whatever circuit you're looking at. You start drawing a red line from there to the load. Uh, in case of the EVAP port solenoid, many solenoids on your car, they're gonna power gonna come from the fuse box. You find the fuse, start drawing the red line from the fuse box to that, to that solenoid or load. However, in case of different sensors on your car, the power is gonna come from the PCM. You know, like the crankshaft sensor we just talked about, power came from your five volts, came from your power control module to that sensor. Now, as far as how the different sensors on your car work, how the different solenoids work, how you can test them, make sure they're working properly, how to test the wires, the connectors, all that stuff, that takes a little bit more time to learn. Not very difficult, but simply need to be uh, you know, pay attention to details and of course the prerequisite to learning how to test those is learning or knowing how to read electrical diagrams. And of course if you're going to be replacing some of these uh, electrical components on your car yourself, you may need some tools. And speaking of tools, I'm going to be giving some away on my Patreon page. Now, if you've been thinking or have thought of supporting me on my Patreon page, again this is the time to do it. I'll be doing this tool giveaway before the end of the year. It won't be just one tool, it'll be mul multiple tool or tool sets that will be giving, I will be giving away. Now as far as what else you can learn to fix electrical issues on your car, what I recommend you learn is that first, learn how to use a multimeter properly, and second, how to test relays. If you don't know how to do either of those things, fear none, I have videos doing those two subjects exactly. I put a link to one in this corner and one in the lower corner, so you can click on, check them out yourself. Also, don't forget to subscribe, hit that bell notification, and the thumbs up. All right, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.